Explain the animation for a GPS. Uh, well, we have we have a hawk, and it's animated, so its wings flap. If we were watching the Bismarck documentaries, like let's say we were not us, yeah, and we we're looking at. Uh, objectively, what would be the Bismarck drinking game that we would do? It'd be too easy if it was every time I was asleep because then we'd all be basically guzzling gallons of liquor. Anytime Dan starts complaining about something, well, we'd be dead. Every time something happened to gear, the vehicle, or the venue itself, yeah, uh, it would or, trigger something. I guess anytime I just give up all hope on mankind. I think those every time you put your head in your hands, I think, yeah, we'll take a shot. Like, oh, Jesus. The saddest part, I think, for the viewers is they don't have a chance to drink whenever uh, you fret that you fucked something up in the filming of the movies. <laughs> I do have a reel going of myself directing other people, though. So, like, giving Nate, for example, giving Nate the camera and then saying, like, the focus is here. Yeah, but then, yeah. No, you have to do, what, are you filming me or are you filming Dan? Wait, are you acting or are you actually acting me right now? Because you know me, yeah, no, I can't, this, I'm I can't. acting right now. Okay, I couldn't tell. Yeah, see, exactly. I think it's and it's every time the van is on a tow truck, regurgitate <laughs> everything you've drunk and drink it again. Drink it again. <laughs> Always in the van or vehicle, whatever we have. Regardless of where we're at, someone, usually jury, always buys checks mix. I bought the old party blend uh, before leaving home. Now, what is this you're opening right now? This is a Mexican confection of some sort by the Marinella Company. It's a Gancito, which looks like a looks like a Twinkie that's been enrobed in some sort of chocolate. And it looks like it both has a strawberry and a cream filling and weird sprinkles on top. This is cat food. There's a our 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 enterprise rental car came with a Ziploc bag of cat food, which I'm saving for later. Dan? Yeah. Uh the Dead Moon shirt. How many tours has that shirt been on now? I would say almost all of the tours. It's a good all-purpose shirt. It's held up remarkably well for a piece of Dead Moon merchandise, actually. <laughs> Uh, I, I had a, a shirt from a, a band of friends uh, called Sunset Beach. They're a band from Tulsa that we played with a number of times, and they came up and played with us a number of times in my old band, uh, Immapol XG. Did you bring it this time? I did not, because it's in, it's in tatters. <laughs> it is no longer a shirt. It is like a, a collar and like one sleeve. My version of this is I have a South Dakota t-shirt. That was the yellow one with the brown sleeves. Yes. Uh, much like Chris's Sunset Peach shirt, it's just completely worn out and destroyed. And I looked at it yesterday thinking, this is going to be the last tour, and then I just put it on, and I'm like, this is, this is the most uncomfortable shirt. <laughs> I don't want to be stuck in a van all day wearing this anymore, so that was, that was it for that one. I did have my Suicide Girl shirt, That's which right. was the one, um, and I recently <laughs> found that in the box, as everyone laughs. Uh, I found that in one of the boxes. It no longer fits me, so I do have this. What? Yeah. I've gained a little weight, guys. So what do you got now? So this is this is my backup. I wore this yesterday and this is it's like a Brazzers it, shirt. It's 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 it, this is this is basically my this is basically my uh my, my guy Fieri shirt pretty much. Chris, are you excited for this show? Yeah, this show should be good. I've I've since I was an itty bitty child, uh well, not itty bitty. Uh <laughs> you I, I've, you I've always mother. wanted to, to play Gilman, and so now we get to. Conan, 
Yes, sir. How long have you been waiting to play at the Bismarck in the in the Bay Area? Oh God, this must be 2004. It's like nine years, something along those lines. For whatever reason, it's been a cavalcade and tom tomfoolery and shenanigans every time I try to get you guys down here. Yet here you are, in all its glory. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. You know, I have to say, the 16-year-old me, who was mail-ordering Crimshine records for some fucking reason, <laughs> in 1992, he is pretty fucking stoked to be playing here tonight. Woo! And the 37-year-old husk of a man that you see before you is still quite excited. I can cross this off my list of things to do before I die, which given the sorry state of driving I've witnessed on this trip, could be tomorrow, as far as I know. So there was a ska band, defunct, yes, with a U, and they did a reggae cover, specifically a Bob Marley cover, and uh, ska covering reggae is essentially like the Voltron of Suck. It's like... Building suck upon suck. It's kind of remarkable. Freedom! No rules. There are turn lights, but obviously no way to use them. That's strange. To like. I am um, purchasing snow globes for, for Fiona, my lovely girlfriend, who is trying to recreate a snow globe collection. And there, what's which one specifically you're looking for? Um, I'm looking for the cheapest, most tackiest. I might get one with a cable car. Ideally, what I would like to do is find an erotic snow globe. I think we're going to have to go to the Castro District for that. What do you think an erotic snow globe would look like? So we had, uh, on the way up, we were listening to Dan Zoon, and it would come up on, you know, we just hit it random. Mm -hmm. We have listened to probably 13 Dead Kennedy songs on random. Nice, just random just, eras. Just would randomly just pop in. Sure. I, I kept thinking to myself, like, does the Zoom know? Is it regionally programmed? <laughs> does it know, like, the instant we crossed, like, from Oregon into California? The urine jello territory. Yeah, just, you're, in, you're in the area for, for Dead Kennedys. So we're going to listen to Hop with the Jet Set, stealing people's mail, and then it would be. Uh, Moon over Marin or something like that. But no California to brawl us. So far. We so far. Have the trip you still have the trip back. Exactly. Yeah, we still have the trip yeah. back. Uh, we are in Williams, California. Uh, let's see. Uh, we have 700 miles to go until we get home. The shows were fun. Had a good time. I got to meet an extremely interesting uh, guy, street musician. I was taken by the amount of facial scabs, kind of weeping sores on his face. He's like, hey man, uh, can I read you a poem? I was like, oh, oh boy. So he proceeded to do this sort of Sister Liberty poem thing, real kind of 60s, you know, you know, the, and they took my pen and the dead in the day, the dead in the day. I thought it did. Like, it was kind of like, it was kind of choreographed and everything. And he's like, you know, in lockup, they took away my, I, I wrote sister. And I could never, after that, I couldn't tell. He kind of got in that sing song talking pattern. I couldn't tell when he'd stop the poem. Like, if I should clap or something. I, I kind of was like, ah, you know, kind of like, go on. Where's the big wrap up? And then he was sort of like, you know, kind of let, like, and see, kind of thing. But then I went to go shake his hand, he's like, no brother, no brother, left hand, closer to the heart. I learned that in Boy Scouts. Huh. Apparently that's a thing. Yeah, so that was, that was the most, the most interesting person I met on tour.